Uh, my name is Alif. I am 24 years old. I co-own uh, Coffee Cat with my partner. Uh, I am currently studying and doing this as a part-time job. I am also a. I am also the one who pulls the shots as a barista here. And uh, yeah, let's talk about our coffee. Uh, it makes me feel good that I can um, serve people and could educate them about coffee more, rather than thinking that uh, it's something that I want to make sales of. It's it's much more than that, actually. You know, just making people, other people feel good makes me feel good. Uh, well, it started out when I was studying in the UK. Um, I was looking for a part-time job. And apparently in the UK, um, they are, uh, there's a difference between working like places such as um, commercial coffee, like, like Starbucks, um, uh, Narrow Coffee, um, you know, different franchises, right? But I worked in this small place in Coventry. Uh, which um, I had, at first, I was just doing it for the money because I really needed the money, I was a student. But then like, uh, the owner actually taught me the, uh, the process of like, Adi, he taught me how to cup the coffee. Cupping coffee uh, basically is like, for you to taste the coffee before you brew it. Um, it's another way for you to break coffees basically. So he taught me how to do that and then I took um, classes for coffee. Basically, uh, back in the UK, uh, they have a uh, SCAA, which is Specialty Coffee Association. I'm uh, sorry, it's just SCA. It's a Specialty Coffee Association. Uh, they taught me on uh, how to pull coffee, how to take care of the co coffee machine. Um, basically, they taught me from A to Z. Um, um, and then, like, I just fell in love with it. It's just how making a cup of coffee just, um, you know, it shows that it's not as simple as it is because when I went in the first time, I was just thinking that, oh, it's just making coffee, it's not that hard. But then, like, learning on, like, making, like, the worst coffee, I've made my worst coffee in my life. And, um, yeah, that's how I learned. And, like, I realized how, how hard, it's not really that hard, it's just the fact that it's not, as easy as it seems. So that's how I fell in love with it. I learned a lot about it. Um, I think I have been doing it for about six years now. And making coffee is just something, um, something different for me. It is, um, you see making coffee is not as simple as you think. Uh, making coffee is very technical. It is um, it is very tedious, uh, as like uh, even like the smallest changes for the uh, and even like your surroundings, your environment. It's uh, it changes the how the density of the coffee is, how the taste of the coffee is, uh, especially like whenever it's raining, it tastes different. Whenever it's hot, it tastes different. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean also because of the coffee art, the latte art, that's one of the aspects of, uh, you know, the art of making coffee. Latte art, uh, well, um, latte art has been around since I think it's about, I think about 1980 plus. Because uh, usually back then the classic old Italian coffee, they have like um, just, you know, normal espresso with milk. Uh, top on like with foam on top. Uh, well, it takes some practices. Uh, I think I only got it right the uh, probably the, like my 200th cup. Yeah, that's how, I, and that was a simple heart. This is what we call a porta filter. Uh, we have to weigh it. We weigh it. Uh, just to make sure uh, the amount of coffee grounds that goes inside the porta filter is enough. So usually for here, I usually just dose it around 20, gra 20 grams of uh, grounded coffee, and I'll just extract it. Uh, usually, uh, a shot can go uh, up to around from 25 seconds to 30 seconds, 
that's like just a time, uh, what you call it, like a um, like a guideline for you to see how well it can be extracted. So usually we use ratios to count, like usually it's a one to two ratio, that's what we call an espresso. If it's a one to one, we call it a ristretto. So um, yeah, basically we just grind it, uh, we tamp it using our tamper. We have to distribute it evenly or else it would be uneven and you won't get the best extraction from it. Yeah, that's one of it. That, that's how you make the espresso. But for the milk, uh, we dose it inside this, which is a normal milk pitcher. And we will uh, steam it using our steam arm, which is this. Usually we make it like just optimum level, just make sure it's uh, warm enough. So it won't be, if it's too hot, you might want to, you might burn the milk. And it won't taste good on your coffee basically. Okay, so far, um, the types of coffee beans, the coffee beans that we are using right now is a tri-blend. So that means it's uh, three blends inside one uh, coffee, which is uh, Indonesia, India, and Guatemala. So um, each part of the coffee, like coming from different regions, it, is, uh, it tastes different uh, because um, the coffee is uh, planted at a different uh, elevation. Some of it is from a different region as well. And depending on the temperature, it, it changes from like the coffee, how it's being brewed, and also how it's um, the processing of it. So there's natural process, uh, which is uh, they let the coffee cherries outside uh, so it, uh, uh, to, for it to naturally Okay, natural process, they put it inside this thing called a water tank. So uh, some of the good coffees will rise up and some of the bad coffees will go down. So that's how they, they differentiate all the coffees, right? And then uh, we have honey process. Honey process is basically, um, they lay it out outside in a tarp, on a tarp uh, with the coffee cherries and stuff. With So it will, um, it becomes, uh, the, the cherries will become like honey-like texture, that's why they call it a honey process and then they put it inside the washing uh, mill and they will process it from there. So they will, uh, they will make, uh, the differences between all these different kinds of processes, honey process it turns, it makes the coffee a bit more sweeter, but wash process it makes the cup more cleaner. You get more um, cleaner taste, but for uh, honey process usually you get that acidic taste from it. Yeah, that's the that's how you differentiate both. For me, if I am making coffee for myself, uh, I would just look at how how I brew it. Like there's different ways of brewing it, such as espresso. Some of it is like pour overs. But for me, since I live at home, uh, since uh, when I'm at, whenever I'm at home, I don't have the espresso machine, I'll just make myself a pour over. Um, always start in the morning, don't start late. If you start late, you'll feel very groggy, you're, you don't have enough coffee intake for yourself, like caffeine is not enough for you. But if I'm being served, to be, on, to be completely honest, is how I'm getting treated in, like let's say if I go into a cafe, I feel like the environment plays a part rather than the coffee taste. It's like whenever I go inside a coffee taste, and, eh, sorry, a coffee, um, a cafe, and I'm being treated like, uh, if I'm being treated badly, then I think the cup of coffee will just taste bad. Doesn't matter how good the coffee tastes, it's just not as good. Yes, that's my secret. Yeah.